tell me about the church that you're at. It's Midway United Methodist Church. Okay. Over on Midway Road mm -hmm. on the other side of Douglas. Very Hill. familiar with that church. Yeah. Um, we have uh, lots of ministries going on, uh -huh. um, preschool, after school. Yeah, we shot um, something, what was the thing called, where the they go out and build the ramps for the Real, uh, people. River of, River of Life. Life, yes, yes. yes. Yep. Yeah, we went out and shot with them with, uh, I think we did something with Pastor Frank Boone. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and I, I played soccer with his son. Oh, okay. So I've known him for years. Okay. Yeah. So today we are talking with a member of Grief Share. This is a program that goes on at Midway United Methodist. Yes. Uh, we're going to be talking more about that. Introduce yourself. I'm Linda Jackson, Okay. A member of Midway. Um, I'm the director of the preschool there. Awesome. So you wear many hats. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we're going to talk more about Grief Share in just a moment. But if you've watched this show, Serving's Kitchen with a Cause, you know that one of the things we do is we hide what we're cooking from our guests. And what we've done here, like always, is we have cloaked our ingredients in what we call the beach towel of deception. <laughs> you are being deceived right now. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reveal the ingredients and give you a chance to try to guess what we're cooking today. And I'll give you a hint. We always try to match up the recipes with the organization that we have on the show. Okay. All right, so here we go. Lots of ingredients this time. Yes. And we are doing three different recipes. Let's see if you can guess. Any idea? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> We've got we got potatoes. Some sort of casserole, I would guess. A casserole. Because that's what you take to somebody's house. It after is. A funeral. That is a great guess. A great guess. And and sort of when we get done, it's gonna. It may look a little bit like a casserole. It's three separate ingredients. However, it is comfort food. So that's what we're doing today. Today, the the grief share is all about getting people through their journey, as you said earlier, yes. uh, going from morning to joy. Morning to joy. So we're preparing comfort food to try to help along that process. So what we're doing today is we're doing Swedish meatballs, okay, almost like a, a meatloaf. We're doing mashed potatoes, but they are souped up mashed potatoes. Let me tell you what, these are gonna be the best mashed potatoes you ever tasted. and. Something that a lot of people say, I don't like those. But when they taste mine, they change their mind. We're doing Brussels sprouts. Mm. All right, so we got Swedish meatballs, mashed potatoes, Brussels sprouts. It's all about comfort food. When we come back, we'll start the Swedish meatballs. All right, we're reset. We're ready to do the Swedish meatballs, part of our comfort food medley we got going. Uh, the first step is to combine almost all of our ingredients. There are tons of ingredients that go in this. You can omit any that you don't want. Uh, you can add ingredients that you do want. But basically, uh, from the way the recipe sounds, it's almost like making a meatloaf. Mm -hmm. So okay. what we're gonna do is add our uh, ground beef here. And one of the things I like to do is have a trash bowl. Boom. So then you don't have to worry about it. We've got a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs. We've got about a tablespoon of chopped up parsley to add that fresh taste. And here we have a quarter cup of nutmeg, I mean a quarter teaspoon, sorry, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of allspice, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Add that in there. Now we want to add an egg. And just a little bit of salt and pepper. Now our salt and pepper is hiding right over here. I'm gonna let you add a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm okay. gonna grab a towel. Always good to have a towel to wipe your hands on, especially when you're working with eggs. Awesome. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I've got a skillet over here heating up, medium high heat, or medium heat rather, I don't want it high. 
I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to coat the bottom. And then I've got a tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna get that going. Move that around. Make sure we get the whole bottom covered. There we go. And now the dirty part. I'm gonna take my ring off. And while I'm doing this, why don't you tell us a little bit about how Grief Share started at your church? Okay. Um, I um, lost my dad in June of 2016 mm -hmm. and um, found a Grief Share group that fall for myself. And it made such a difference in my grief process, in my being able to handle that and move on that I wanted to bring it to my church. Okay. Um, we're an older church and we had started losing um, husbands and wives and, and I just knew that there were grieving people in, mm -hmm. my, in my own church and so I wanted to bring it to my church. That's good, that's good. Now, what is the, the Grief Share program? What, what, what happens there? It's a, um, a weekly meeting, weekly sessions, 13 in the, in the whole process. Um, each session involves a video that is um, produced by the Grief Share program. Okay. Um, it's experts talking about, um, like psychologists and experts talking about grief and also just plain ordinary people that have lost somebody and talking about what their grief process was like. Okay. And uh, the first session start, you know, is called, Is This Normal? Mm. Just trying to help grieving people understand that what you're feeling is okay. Mm -hmm. And other people are in that same boat. Right. So each week we watch a video, then there's time for small group discussion. Um, the video is, is them talking to us, and the small mm -hmm. group discussion is us talking with each other. Uh -huh. And then during the week between the two, between the sessions, there's a, a workbook. I like to call it a travel guide okay. on the journey. Right, um, like a, the journey we were talking about. Right, right. Uh, um, a workbook with five, probably 10 or 15 minute um, sessions with a, a Bible verse and some questions to ask about how you're doing that week. And, mm -hmm. and then just a, you know, a little prayer at the end, um, just a chance for you to just kind of process what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would imagine your emotions sort of evolve over the 13 weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it kind of catches you where you are and moves you along the journey. Right. You know, we've kind of been told that there's a there's stages of grief. Right. And they're not really stages. You can you can feel two of you know, you can be in kind of two of those stages at one time or or you can hit one or and then hit what's supposed to be number four right. and come back to three and it's just it's more like a roller coaster right and some days you're doing fine and some days you're you, nothing works right yeah so just to know that that's okay mm -hmm. and that's normal and other people feel that way right that's the best thing is to is for the group to share with each other and you you're in a group with people that you find out that other people feel like you do. Right, it's sort of cliche, but you know, to know you're not going through it alone right. is, is a big deal, I would imagine. Right. And this is, since hearing that, that they have, uh, that there are videos that you actually go through tells me that this is a, a pretty big network of, of a program. Yes, it is. There's, there's groups all over the country. There's multiple groups here in Douglasville. Oh, okay. Um, we're, we're not the only one. And they kind of, it's nice because they run at different times. Okay. Um, some are just ending, we just started. So, and you can, you don't have to start with session one. You can join the group at any point. Uh-huh. Um, I, I read this morning, it's kind of like an emergency room. Uh-huh. Um, so we don't say, well, you missed the first four, you need to wait till we start again. Right. Um, you can start at any point. Yeah, because, um, you know, people, it isn't like you receive a batch of people who are all in the same stage or, you know, not the best word for it, but, you know, I would imagine you would get people who are a month in, two years in. Yes. So they're, they're kind of all over. And not everybody's ready at the same point in their grief to, to spend time with other people and talk about it. Right. Um, we had a lady in our last session whose husband traveled a lot. So when he died, she kept saying, I feel like he's just traveling. Yeah. And she wasn't Eventually. ready to 
deal with the fact that he was gone. Yeah. Once she realizes he's not traveling, that's probably when she'll <laughs> she'll be ready. Yes. How long have you been doing the program? We started it last August as uh -huh. our first session, and we're in we have just started our second session. Okay. How much time do you have in between sessions? We're still playing with that. Um, it's supposed to be 13 weeks. Our first session, our first round took us from August all the way to February. Okay. Um, as, as the group changed, sometimes only one person would show up mm -hmm. and they would say, let's just wait till next week. So we'd push it off till next week. Uh -huh. And they and I might talk for a little bit about what we, you know, how we were doing that week, but we wouldn't watch the video. We wouldn't do the whole session. Right. Um, this time we started April 6th. We're going to run we're going to run 13 sessions straight through. Okay. So I'm looking at hopefully maybe starting August, September again. Okay. Um, the, the design is to run three sessions a year. All right. Um, so that it's, so it's a continuous thing so that somebody can come in, step into it any time mm -hmm. and, and have what they need when they're ready for it. Right. But we're still playing with it as, as, since it's kind of new yeah. for us. All right, looks like our last of the meatballs ready. They're not completely cooked through, but what we're gonna do is make a, a nice gravy for the Swedish meatballs. Mm. And that will uh, continue to cook them. We'll let them simmer in the gravy. So I'm gonna add four tablespoons of butter. You know it's gonna be good. Yes. If you got four <laughs> tablespoons of butter. Yep. I know it looks like five, but that's just the way I cut them up. And then I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flour, but I'm gonna grab a whisk real quick. We've got all the little bits still in here from our cooking this, the uh, meatballs themselves. We will whisk that flour in. And this is actually called a roux or a gravy. It's all the same. We're gonna cook it until it turns brown. Then we'll be adding some beef broth, some Worcestershire sauce, and some Dijon mustard. So I'm gonna put you to work. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> all right, so if you'll look on here and see how much uh, beef broth, you can go ahead and pour it into one of those measuring cups. We do have more beef broth if we need it. Okay. All right, it's looking pretty good. You wanna pour that beef broth in here? Okay. Watch out, dog. Got our assistant Luna down there. And I believe we add the cream at the same time. Yes, slowly add in the cream. That's gonna be good. that heat up and then we're gonna add I'm gonna add some Worcestershire sauce and some Dijon mustard okay calls for about a tablespoon that looks like a tablespoon close enough and then about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of the Dijon that looks about right sometimes I measure sometimes I don't you know whatever bring that to a simmer and we can go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper here's our salt and a little bit of pepper awesome so as soon as this starts to simmer we'll let it get a little thick 
add our meatballs, and we will be ready to let them simmer for a little while, get them, let them cook uh, the rest of the way through. And then we're ready to cook our mashed potatoes and our Brussels sprouts. Okay. The Brussels sprouts are gonna surprise you, I promise. Uh, we'll be able to cook those both at the same time, so we'll be killing two birds with one stone. Okay. Which is a very violent thing to say. <laughs> We're actually not gonna be killing any birds, I promise. But we'll be right back. Huge change here on set, huge change, because we got two recipes going at the same time. I did a lot of prep already. I've sliced up some bacon and the Brussels sprouts for the Brussels sprouts recipe. I also sliced, uh, peeled and sliced the potatoes that are now getting ready to boil. And we're gonna have those nice and ready for our mashed potatoes. Um, while I start sauteing the bacon, um, won't you tell us a little bit about the types of people that you guys are helping with Grief Share, and also if maybe somebody needs Grief Share in their life, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get involved? Okay. Um, right now, everybody in the group is um, has lost a spouse. Um, okay. That, but that's not necessarily typical. That just happens to be the makeup right now. Yes. Yes. Um, people are. are I'm, I'm still working through the loss of my dad. Um, people have lost children um, in, in, uh, in the group I was in originally. Several people had lost children. Mm -hmm. So um, it, 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 needs to, it needs to be the loss of a person. Right. Um, right there are right. other losses that people go through, but mm -hmm. um, grief share itself is not meant to deal with um, a, like a divorce or the loss, mm -hmm. even the loss of a pet or mm -hmm. um, just the other, some of the other big losses. So it's, right. it, it needs to be the loss of a loved one. Okay. Um, but parent, child, spouse, mm -hmm. um, sister, brother, yeah. as long as it's a person. Okay. Um, and, and the, I don't know if I said this already, the losses go from, we have um, one person in the group, just about a six or eight week loss. Um, all the way to um, somebody who's coming up on the second anniversary of their husband's okay. death. Yeah. So there's no time limit either. The first group I was in had losses, um, people who were dealing with losses 10, 20 years ago. Wow. It just depends on when you get ready mm -hmm. to, to, to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, eventually it's a positive thing right. to work through it and, and to to find out that what you're dealing with is normal, mm -hmm. to and to figure out how to how to move on, mm -hmm. um, it never really goes away. Mm -hmm. The loss, you, you don't really get over it, yeah. but you learn how to how to live with it. Right. I guess that's the key is learning to live with it. Yes. Because I know a lot of people they shut down. Yes. And they don't want to yeah. live with it. Yeah. There's one lady at church now that. Um, is having just a hard time accepting that her mom is gone. Mm -hmm. And she told me a couple weeks ago, I haven't talked to mom in a while, I think I need to call her. Wow. And and that just breaks my heart. Yeah. That's not that's not good for you to, yeah. to be in that place. Right. So um, there's, you can, um, you can call the church. Um, okay. The church secretary knows to pass people on to me. Mm -hmm. You can also call the, the preschool number. Um, and get me directly during the day. Okay. So, uh, can people just join at any point during the uh, the process, or do they need to wait to the next uh, class to start up? Or? No, you can start. You can join at any point. Okay. Um, it's kind of sequential, but not really. the the first The first few sessions are about just comfort, and you know, is this normal? How do How do I deal with my feelings? The right. middle is how to how to kind of live with it and move on, and then the end, the last three or four sessions are kind of the hope for the future. Mm -hmm. But you can join at any point, and lots of people do more than one cycle. Okay. Um, if you you know if you start at week six, you're you're you can come back and mm -hmm. do the beginning. Right. Um, and even you don't have to just do thirteen weeks. Lots mm -hmm. of people do. 
multiple cycles uh -huh. on purpose. 26. Mm -hmm. 20, yeah. <laughs> Just keep two, going. Two, maybe three is, is the recommendation. Right. Once, you know, if you've done it three times and you're still struggling, then there's there's more to it than yeah. than just regular right. grief. Right. I'm gonna get a spoon for the garlic. We always use my daughter's baby spoons. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a baby anymore, but hey, why throw away anything ever? We're, yeah, we're ready. You might awesome. need it one day. Yeah, I mean. All right, we got the garlic in there. Got our taters going. I'm gonna use my whisk to stir those up. Why not? We trapped one. Get out of there. There he goes. All right, we're just about ready for our Brussels sprouts to go in here. So what I'm gonna do, the bacon is almost done. Put the Brussels sprouts in here and they're gonna get nice and caramelized. So we're basically sauteing everything. You wanna get a pan that's, that's big enough to where most of them are gonna touch the pan all the time it makes the, uh, the sauteing process go a little faster and the caramelization will happen a little faster. Once we get them caramelized, we're gonna add some beef stock. We're up to probably about halfway up, cover it, let it simmer for about 20 minutes. And then at, by the time we put the beef stock in there, I think our potatoes are gonna be ready. We will smash them down in some butter some cream cheese, mm. Parmesan, oh my goodness. I can't wait. When we come back, all this is gonna be ready to put together. See you in a sec. Got our mashed potatoes ready to go into the bowl. We're gonna do that in just a second. Got the Swedish meatballs bubbling back there. They're looking great, smelling great. And our Brussels sprouts are simmering away. That beef broth got added and it's just gonna soak up into the, oh my goodness, I can't even talk about it. All right, so I've drained the mashed potatoes. Now I'm gonna put them right here on top of our butter and our cream cheese because we want it to melt the butter and the cream cheese. Mm -hmm. There we go. And I'm gonna give you the prestigious job of mashing. So we're gonna mash those up for a couple minutes, trying to get the butter and the cream cheese incorporated. And I am definitely not against adding more if we have to, but that will be determined once we get all the other ingredients included and incorporated. So the other ingredients that we will be including We've got heavy cream, oh yes. These are diet mashed potatoes. Go ahead and add some of that. Be a little easier to mash. When I make my mashed potatoes, it's all based on feel, you know? You can kind of feel how soupy it feels. You wanna add just a, you know, a little bit of cream, not a whole lot, because if you add too much, you can't really take it back out. Now the more that you mash and the longer it sits, the more it will absorb. So even if it's a little soupy at first, it's okay, just let it sit or keep mashing and it will probably be better. Keep going, or is that uh, good? That's good for right this second. We're gonna also add some Parmesan cheese. A nice amount, so we take, whoa, hey, that's a nice amount, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Usually the accidents are what, what makes it the best, so. And then I'm gonna add a little more salt, a little pepper. Now mash it up a little bit more, and then we will stir it. 
Oh, those are looking so good. Oh my gosh. Can't even contain myself. So creamy. How's that? Oh, look? that is just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm gonna just stir it up just a little bit, make sure everything is incorporated. Because although you're mashing, you're not stirring a whole lot. It's hard to stir up with the with the masher. So this is kind of the last little bit. And they are feeling just a little bit sticky. So gotta add some more cream. I mean, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I add so much cream that when I stir it, I make a mess. See, I already spilled some. Now normally, we wait till the end of the show to taste everything, but I think we're gonna have to taste a little bit of this. Let's do it. It's like dessert. Mm -hmm. Dessert potatoes, Good. that's what we got. All right, so the potatoes are ready. Swedish meatballs are ready. All we're waiting for is our Brussels sprouts to simmer down that beef broth. They'll be ready. When we come back, we're gonna taste it all. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. I don't know if we have ever had a more beautiful display on this show. So hopefully the taste will live up to the hype because that looks amazing. It does. If I do say so it myself. Does. All right, so what we're gonna do is try some. So we'll get a meatball and a little bit of the mashed potatoes underneath. And that's the thing about comfort food is it, it, just, it just all goes together and kind of mixes. There we go. Okay. That's what I love about comfort food. I want it to all be just kind of there together, marinating. There we go. All right. So what do you think? What do you want to taste first? Potatoes. Potatoes. All right. Here we go. Pull some of those potatoes off of there. Mmm. Mm. Even better with that, the gravy from yes. the Swedish yeah. meatballs. Brussels sprout? Yes. All right. Going in for a Brussels sprout. Mm -hmm. mm. I just love Brussels sprouts, especially cooked like this. Yeah. So good. Not the way I remember them when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the Swedish meatball. I feel better already. Just makes you go, mm. Do you guys ever bring food in to? We have snacks. Snacks? Yeah, light snacks. Um, yeah, you gotta have some kind of food. You just got to. Linda, thanks you, thank you so much for being on the show. We welcome. appreciate you coming in and telling us about Groove Share. You're welcome, thank and you. It, and again, tell, tell everybody if, if they need Grief Share, what can they do to get involved? You can call Midway United Methodist Church. Okay. And um, the church secretary knows th some of the information and she forwards the information to me. Okay. You can also call the preschool directly and, and reach me directly. Um, and you can also go to Grief Share online. Okay. Go go just Google Grief Share. And um, there's a place to locate the local meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can find it that way as well. And you can register online. Great. And that gets sent to me. Good. So if you need to get involved, if you need Grief Share, make sure you call the church, Google Grief Share. Uh, the show is Servings Kitchen with a Cause. It's all about getting involved. Sometimes getting involved means actually being a part of that organization, taking advantage of some of the things that that organization offers you. Okay. So we'll see you next time on Servings Kitchen with a Cause. Let's eat up. Thank you.